When you listen to Dharma talks in Thailand, it's rare to hear a Dharma talk in which there's no mention of defilements. The fact that greed, aversion, delusion defile the mind is a constant theme, and that the practice is all about cleansing the mind of those defilements, doing battle with the defilements, finding ways to not fall for their tricks. As John Lee says, to study is to know the text, but to practice is to know your defilements, the purpose of which is to know them and let them go eventually, go beyond them. But if you listen to Dharma talks in the West, you never hear about this. The word is never mentioned. It's interesting that there are some aspects of the traditional teachings that modern Western teachers like to brag about, saying that they're going to drop this or drop that, they're going to drop karma, they're going to drop rebirth. But they don't even mention the word defilement. You would never know that it was part of the Buddhist teachings. It's a passage that they like to quote that says, the mind is luminous. And they stop there to give the impression that your mind is basically pure and clean and there's no real problem there. Just realize that you're already pure and clean and that's it. But the whole passage says a lot more. It says the mind is luminous, but it is defiled by visiting defilements. And if you don't know this, there's no training of the mind. Then you look at the Buddhist teachings and one of the basic analogies that he uses is that the practice is a kind of cleansing, it's a kind of purification. So if you don't appreciate the importance of the defilement, you can't really train the mind. So exactly what is defilement and what's defiled? And how do you cleanse it? One of the Buddha's most basic teachings on cleansing is the one he gave to Rahula when Rahula was just seven years old. You look at your actions in terms of your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. Before you do them, you ask yourself, is this going to cause any affliction, either to me or to anyone else? And if you see that it's going to cause affliction, you don't do it. If you don't expect any affliction, you go ahead and do it. While you're doing it, you watch to see what the actual results of that, that action may be. And if you run across any affliction, you stop. If not, you carry on. And finally, when the action is done, you look at the long-term consequences, and if you realize you caused any affliction to yourself or others, you resolve not to repeat it. If it was an action or something you said, you go and you talk it over with someone who you trust in the path. One, so that you develop this ability to admit your mistakes. You don't try to hide them. And then secondly, so you can benefit from the other person's knowledge. It was just a thought. You simply say, okay, I'm ashamed of that thought. I don't want to do it again. It's beneath me. If you see that the action didn't cause any long-term affliction, then you take joy in the fact and carry on in the practice. And as the Buddha said, Everyone in the past who has cleansed their thoughts, words, and deeds has done it in this way. Everyone in the future who is going to cleanse their thoughts, words, and deeds will do it in this way. And in the present moment, anyone who cleanses his or her thoughts, words, and deeds will do it in this way. There's another passage where the Buddha talks about cleansing. and Basically, it's following the Ten Guidelines. You don't kill, steal, have illicit sex, you don't lie. You don't speak divisively, you don't speak harshly, you don't engage in idle chatter. And then finally, in terms of the mind, you try to abandon any overweening greed, any ill will, any wrong views. So when we look at the way the Buddha talks about cleansing, he's not talking he's not saying that the mind is basically defiled in its nature. He's saying it's the actions are defiled. And what's the defilement? It's this ability to cause affliction. In other words, even though you should be acting for the purposes of happiness, you turn around and you act for the affliction of yourself or others or both. That's the defilement. And 
And as for the luminosity of the mind, it's your ability to see that. Okay, you have caused affliction and you can do something about it. It's not that there's an innate bad nature to the mind or an innate good nature, as the Buddha said, thinking I am bad or I am good. Either one of those is just simply an expression of craving and clinging. You want to look at your actions. And he's right, you know, if your actions are causing this kind of affliction, the actions are dark and they darken the mind. They make it more difficult for you to see what you're doing. And if you do see what you're doing and try to pretend that you didn't cause any affliction, that's darkness as well. It's denial. So when you think about why people don't like to hear about defilement in the West, may involve a lot of things, but one of them is that you know, we're told by psychologists that if you have low self-esteem, if you think you're basically bad, it's, it's unhealthy. And then, of course, our economy depends on greed, aversion, and delusion to keep going. And so the media keep encouraging it. You'll be proud of your greed, proud of your anger and delusion, proud of your, basically proud of your defilements. And if you don't want to admit them, what is that but another big defilement? Because when the Buddha is talking about defilement, he's talking about this ability we have to cause suffering. The teaching on defilement is really basic, the most basic of the Buddha's teachings, which is the Four Noble Truths. When he talks about the fact that it's not your innate nature of the mind, but it's your actions, he's talking about the Second Noble Truth. And the fact that defilement is affliction, that relates to the First Noble Truth. But the luminosity of the mind, this ability to see that there is affliction and it is related to your actions, that's what enables you to follow the path. And so if you can't admit these things, it's not healthy. It's narcissism. It's repression. So it's important that you learn to keep this concept in mind and realize what we are doing is a kind of cleansing. There is this darkness in the mind. Fortunately, it's not innate to the mind. It can be cleansed, and we can cleanse it away ourselves. That's the important part. That's what the luminosity is all about. There's one faction that doesn't like the teaching on defilement because it's, it suggests that we need somebody else's help to cleanse ourselves. But that's not what the Buddha is saying. You have this luminosity. In other words, you have this ability to see there is suffering. If the mind were totally dark and wouldn't even recognize suffering as such, it wouldn't realize that it's optional or that something should be done about it. That would be total darkness. You wouldn't be able to see that what you were doing was causing the suffering. So you do have this ability to cleanse your own mind. Now it works best in an environment when you're around people cleansing their minds as well, who have had some success in it, so you can see their example and get advice from them. But you do have this potential within you that you can do the work yourself, and it's work worth doing. So it's good to think about this concept of defilement, to know where it's coming from. It's coming from what you're doing and saying and thinking. There's a darkness in the mind that's caused by your actions, but it doesn't have to be there. Your actions can change. I mean, as the Buddha said, if people couldn't change their actions, if they couldn't abandon unskillful qualities and develop skillful qualities, there would be no point in this teaching. But it's something we can do. So it's good to resist that teaching that says, well, you need self-esteem above all else. I mean, if you're going to have genuine self-esteem, your pride should be around the fact that you learn how to recognize your mistakes and want to do something about them. That's something to be proud of. The idea that I never make a mistake or I'm always good, if your pride is based on that, it's always going to be very shaky. You have to deny what you're doing. You have to deny the results of what you're doing. And that just piles on more and more darkness in the mind. 
So take this to heart. The mind is luminous, but it is defiled by its actions. It's darkened. And we're trying to work our way out of the darkness. And so when greed comes into the mind, or aversion comes, and when you recognize that there's some delusion, you just can't sit there and watch it come and go. You have to do something about it. You've got to figure out, well, why am I acting these ways? I would normally expect that I would want to act for the purposes of happiness, but why am I doing something that's causing affliction? You want to look into that. What is it that you like about the affliction? That's more darkness. Or why would you want to pretend that it's not darkness? That's even more darkness on top of darkness. So what we're doing here is trying to cleanse the mind of that darkness. And the result is not that we go around calling ourselves pure. I mean, the purity is there when it's there. But it's just the nature of the mind. There's nothing at that point where the mind would be proud or not proud. It's just the way things are. But it's a much better state to be in. You're not doing it to impress anybody else. You're doing it to cleanse the mind of its darkness, to stop the suffering that it's causing itself. Because that really is dark. This is the big irony of life. Is we all want happiness, and yet we turn around and do things that cause affliction. And when you begin to recognize that, okay, that's when there's some light in the mind. And it's that light that you want to encourage. Because it's the only way that you work yourself free.